Well, the moment of truth. After all that's been discussed, am I keeping this phone? The answer is... There is no doubt the iPhone 14 lineup looks really good. I mean, the design looked good back in 2020 when the iPhone 12 was announced. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the new things on the iPhone 14 Pro and decide right here, right now, if I am keeping the iPhone 14 Pro. So let's talk about what we actually got that's new for the iPhone 14 Pro. If you haven't seen my video on the photo comparison between the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description below. And on your way down there, if you can give this video a thumbs up, that really helps a lot. And if you enjoy this content, hit that subscribe button, turn on notification bell, so you don't miss my next video. Now since I'm talking about the camera, let's start with that. We got a new main camera that's still 12 megapixel, but hey, they added the 48 megapixel for more detailed pics. Honestly, I, I, I don't see the difference. I mean, if you were to blow a picture up and make it like a, you know, 12 by 10 or 10 by 12 or 20 by 20, maybe you'll see it. I, I, I don't know, but who does that? Now the apertures did go up a little bit, which means less light being let in per shot. This is evident by the increase in contrast and natural color in the photos. The ultra wide and telephoto really didn't look any different to me, but then again, Apple really didn't give me any reason to believe that it was upgraded at all, besides software. Now for people who were looking for better results in low light, the adjustment to the aperture did the same thing to this as well. Oh, and the photonic engine added to the phones, which if you saw my last video, I absolutely butchered it. Whatever phototonic. Phototonic. Yeah, that one. Thanks for sharing that, other me. So this is basically the software attempting to adjust the photo to make it look the best that it can with zero adjusting. So like I stated, for normal shots, these look way cooler and the darker areas have a little bit more contrast. These changes are really are all personal preference. Some people like warmer, oh, and some people like cooler. Ooh, that's cold. Is that it for camera? Yeah? Yeah. Moving on. Now you also may have seen my video about the video performance. Video about the video perform. You may- Video about the video perform- Oh boy, that's a tongue twister. Now you may have seen my video about the video performance between the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro. If not, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description so you can check it out. The performance between the two for quality was pretty negligible. I hate to sound like a broken record. I hate to sound like a broken record, but unless your phone is three to four years older, you're probably not gonna see a big difference anyway. My only real takeaway from testing is the insane work of action mode. Like seriously, I shook this thing and it performed like a champ. Why did, why did I put that in there? And why do I know that I put that in there? Sorry. I mean, the excuse of shooting bad video during something happening right in front of you is out the window. Could you imagine if they did this in Cloverfield? Better yet, Blair Witch Project. <laughs> For low light and stability? Yeah, movies ruined. Ruined? Oh, and, and before I forget, the front facing camera slash video is better. So if you like taking selfies or looking at yourself while you're shooting video, boom, boom, you're set. I mean, not like life changing set from the 13 Pro, but it didn't get worse, which God, could you imagine? I mean, no, it, which we hope it doesn't get worse. Let's talk about the always on display. All right, we're good. I'm just kidding, but seriously, it's always on. It gets dim when you put it down. When you pick it up, it gets bright. That's about it. Yeah, and, and I know some people are thinking, yeah, we've been there, done that with other phones. Yeah, but good news, you can turn it off. And I'm gonna tell you why in a minute, you probably want to. But first, if you're enjoying this content, give that thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button, turn on notification bell so you don't miss my next video. The Dynamic Island, Apple's solution because they brought the notch to smartphones. Now I will admit, this is actually pretty cool. The software does a great job incorporating many things into the notifications, like seeing things running in the background. For example, I, I know it's not super special, but my daughter is all about the, ah, oh, can I have five or 10 more minutes, please? 
Uh, set the timer. Uh, how much time do I have left? <laughs> so now I can see right there instead of having to go back into the app to see what it is if I'm currently on my phone. That thing earlier that I mentioned about turning off the always on display, battery life. Now you get your brand new phone. Oh, it's so cool. You know, it's got a better battery. <gasps> Wait. Some people aren't getting the best battery life. Now, when I tested this, I turned the always on display off and I got over nine hours of usage. When I turned it back on, it dropped about two hours. Yeah, like six to seven or seven to eight, depending on if I got closer to 10. But let's just say for experimental purposes, we averaged about a seven and a half hour usage with the display on. Not good. Yeah, you might wanna bring a battery with you. Did a video on that, uh, it's in the description. Ever since I bought my first iPhone, the 3G, I've always upgraded every year to the newest phone, primarily because I wanted to get to review and I wanted to get the latest accessories that they had out for it because there was always something new and it always worked for the phone that was newer. So that's what I wanted to do. For the fast pew, for the fast pew years? For the fast pew, wow. For the past few years, I have been leaning towards, you don't really need to have to get the latest and greatest, but on the flip side, I do want to get one to help you determine if you want to upgrade because you might be coming from an older phone. So, what to do? <sighs> Well, moment of truth, after all that I've discussed, what am I doing? Well, there's plenty of good and bad reasons that I went over. And my answer is, any any guesses? That's a good guess, that's a good guess too. It's gone, yep. <laughs> no dynamic island, 48 megapixels, or action mode for this fat guy. Actually, I'm wearing black, so I'm looking pretty thin, but I truly feel like this year is so lackluster that I wanted to keep my 13 Pro so I can share my experience with it past one year. In fact, I do have a video that I'm working on that you don't want to miss. Hint, hint. It involves battery life. Hmm. So in the meantime, check out this video that I did about the 10 things you need for your iPhone 14. And of course, if you enjoy this content, hit that subscribe button, turn on notification bell, so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much, have a good day. Yay!